Here at the store, when we first heard there was going to be a new version of the Khan, we didn't think the feedback Astell and Kern got about the first version was, it's good, but can you make it like bigger and like heavier? But evidently that's the feedback AK did get, because now we have the Khan Cube, a truly gargantuan digital audio player that makes the original model look positively svelte. The Khan Cube basically doubles down on what seemed outrageous about the original Khan. Double the price, double the power, double the size. You could fit it in your pocket if you wanted to ruin your jeans, but this is definitely more of a transportable than a portable. In that sense, the Khan Cube is even more of an alternative to a full-size desktop setup in the same way that a gaming laptop is an alternative to a regular desktop. It's something that you're going to move between desks and between rooms. To that end, we have a large display running AK's relatively elegant customized OS, and while it isn't as snappy as, say, something like the Fio M11, we've generally found AK players to be unmatched when it comes to software stability out of the box. The display also has a slight angle, which is quite nice when you realize this means the display tilts towards you when you use the cube on a desk. In terms of inputs and outputs, the cube mixes things up from the original. We have the same 3.5mm single-ended and 2.5mm balanced outs, but instead of the dedicated 3.5 and 2.5mm line outs from the Khan, we now have a single mini XLR balanced output. Apparently, this 5-pin mini XLR connector is optimized for line out since it bypasses the main headphone amp section of the cube. Now we weren't able to test this connector because we don't currently have the cables for it, but we imagine it would be useful when using the cube as a DAC for something like a stack setup. Now you can still use the normal headphone outs as line outs and you'll get a standard 2 volt output, but you might not end up using them this way all that often, considering that you can basically plug almost any headphone into the Khan Cube and you'll get truly astounding levels of power on reserve. The Khan single-ended 3.5mm output now basically puts out as much power as the original Khan's 2.5mm balanced out, which means that we could plug a 600 ohm Beyerdynamic T1 into the 3.5mm output and get a good listening volume at around 90 out of 150 volume steps. Though for classical music with more dynamic range, you might have to go a bit higher. That's where the 2.5mm balanced output steps in, supplying almost twice the power of the single-ended connection. We would feel confident plugging almost any headphone into the 2.5mm balanced out, as long as you can find a 2.5mm balanced headphone cable. And herein lies what we think is the biggest shortcoming you have to consider when you get the Khan Cube. While it's hard to find full-sized headphones that include a 2.5mm balance cable, more and more headphones now come with a 4.4mm balance cable. And we find, and many of our customers agree, that 4.4mm is a physically stronger connector that makes more sense as a standard, especially for the full-sized headphones that the Khan Cube is likely to be used with. By the same token, we think that it would have made more sense to put a larger quarter-inch single-ended output on the Khan, since it's easier to go from 3.5mm to quarter-inch than it is the other way around. Yes, you can get adapters or custom cables made up, but this is another expense to factor in and it's not quite as elegant as it should be. Thankfully, when it comes to IEMs, the 3.5mm single-ended output is relatively clean and quiet. Three different gain settings really improve the convenience when using a mix of headphones and earphones, and on sensitive IEMs like the Campfire Audio Andromeda, you get roughly the same level of hiss as you would get with a lower power DAP like the Sony ZX300. Though if you want something even more immune to hiss with IEMs, we think the SE100 does a better job. So as far as DAPs go, we think players like the Fio M11, which has both 2.5mm and 4.4mm outs, or the Ibasso DX220 with its interchangeable output modules, offer more flexibility than the Khan Cube, even if they don't offer as much power. But this is what we get with a format war, and if you're willing to put up with using adapters or getting custom cables made, then the Khan Cube will power almost every headphone under the sun. This is not a player for everyone, but we think that Astell & Kern has identified a niche of power-hungry users that don't mind carrying around a small brick. This is Lachlan for Minius TV. We'll see you next time.